Hey everyone, Melissa here with The Creative Season. We're looking at five ways to bring spring into our art. So the first way is to grab your camera, go outside and start taking lots of pictures. Just take pictures and observe the absolutely beautiful color palette that nature gives us in the spring. I am finding that the light is a lot warmer, the colors are bright and warm and lively. There's a lightness to everything that is just absolutely lovely. And I find that I am seeing a lot of repeating patterns and colors which is so inspiring. Now, perhaps you don't have spring that has landed quite like it has here in Northern California. I've got ideas for you in numbers two and three. We're also gonna be painting this lovely watercolor, so stay tuned and grab your paints. Okay, so we're moving on to our second way to get inspired to freshen up for spring art is to look through books. Now I am gonna throw out some unusual ones and that is if you have any um, sort of cookbooks that have a seasonal approach. So this is a William and Sonoma entertaining, but um, when I had found it, what I realized was it is all menus for spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And this can be a lot of fun. Of course, here it is a cookbook. And what do you see here is that we have um, floral, right? You have a lot of flowers interspersed with the food because there's something about food and flowers, right? So this can be very inspiring. You even start to get the vibrancy of um, right here. We've got the spring, that warm, bold look where the more gentle, um, light, delicate, cool of summertime. Then we go into fall, and you can just see the difference in the color schemes, right? So we're just focused on spring. So looking through a cookbook that is seasonally approached can be really helpful to kind of start stirring your senses for the spring color palette. And aren't these just gorgeous, gorgeous pictures, right? Just absolutely beautiful. Now, um, I have another one. I'm going to pull this out. But anyways, really beautiful, very fresh, very nice photography. I find that the photography for cookbooks um, is just really sharp anymore, right? The last several years, beautiful cookbooks. So here's another one, Seasons of the Vineyard. And this, again, I discovered when I picked it up, this is all um, seasonal approach, which I absolutely love. So I've turned to page 123 which is spring, just so we don't get, now this is a bit older book, so the the, the, um, the pictures are not gonna be perhaps as crisp, but we're still gonna get some ideas. I mean, look at that, right? You start getting that color where maybe you don't have this in your backyard or where you live, but here we have that yellow and green with the, um, I don't know what those are called, the brown, but this is just very, very inspiring. And then some, and once again, here we have a cookbook and but we have a lot of focus on botanicals and flowers now i will tell you with both of these books um, these are normally you might be thinking those look like really expensive books i was in a friends of the library sale and found them i think five dollars for this one four dollars for this one you can of course get really good deals on books so you don't have to spend a ton these are beautiful beautiful books so you can be creative um, friends of the library has been such a wonderful place for books now here are some more maybe traditional books um this is called a wilder life i think and then and this is a little bit older but i really love again that nature approach so this is all plants recipes home skills DIY eyes adventures but very nature um, nature focus and once again this is um, very seasonal approach so we can spring wilderness so you are going to get the color aspect of that focus of you're seeing similar color right the purples the greens everything is very warm light energetic um, color me floral is a great one again stunning arrangements for every season great book um, many people are, are familiar with Flora Farms Cut Flower Garden, and the other one that she has is, I think, even more focused on going through the season. So, and you can see, um, I do a lot of inspirational. I've got lots of marks in this book where I look at the flowers and paint and get inspired by many of them. So some ideas, especially if it is not spring blooming in your season, grab some of these books. Many are in the library as well, and use them for your palette. Now the third way is to grab the magazines. If you are a subscriber to magazines or if you go by the grocery store or the local um, whatever store that you go to that still carries print magazines, these are fabulous because these are gonna be a little bit more um, catching the trends of the season, right? So my books are really what I would consider classical, both the cookbooks and the, hard, um, the floral books and any sort of, if you have home interior books, they are really with the mindset of the long, 
endurance, right? An author wants a book to last for years. Um, well, the magazines can really capitalize on trends, right? So they're going to, you're still going to get the pop of color. So I've got Victoria magazine here. This is Magnolia and she has done a really um, good job with, I mean, just color, right? That color all throughout. M much more subdued. This one is more uh, subdued color tone in this one this year. So you can start again, you're starting to catch color themes. You have almost a darker green with lighter pop. Of, of peachy pink and then the bright pink I find it interesting this is the British edition of, British edition of country living and again you're getting a bit of more um, bolder um, colors well then we have the tea time with is more a little more lighter but very much almost a pastel spring so looking through these you can get more trends so if you kind of like to be a little bit more daring and bold that's a great idea too right so Grab some magazines for more trendier spring inspirational color palettes. So here we've talked about those things. Now let's go ahead and start gathering your color palette. Now I have cleaned off my palette and I have put together, making sure you can see this okay, pulling this down a bit. I have written out my colors that I'm going to be using, and I do have quite a few. I won't be using all of these colors, but I just want to get them out in front of me so that I can see what I'll be using this spring. And I had some of my paint that I needed to refresh, but you can see I've washed it. it look, it's looking nice, but I want that pure color on, uh, a create a color card of pure color. So when I start to mix things, I kind of have an idea of what gonna, it's gonna look like when I play together. Now, I'm not even gonna mix them too much right now. I'm really just gonna focus on getting the pure colors down. And this is, I find to be a really nice way to just get that color base. And also to identify if I wanna eliminate any color. So this is very easy. I've just taken my marker and written down the colors first. And now I'm gonna just go ahead and I am just starting to make some lovely gaps here, some lovely blobs of color. So with my burnt sand, I'm even just gonna go right over and I'm gonna just do a nice line here, maybe thickening it out right here. And then with the purple, rinse out your brush, maybe use two different brushes too. Ideally, what I will do when I do the, when I create this palette is I do want to create colors that I'm thinking would go nice together as well. So almost creating not necessarily lightest to darkest, but just colors that would sing well together. I want them fairly bold, and then again, just letting that merge out just a little bit, and maybe a little bit more water at the end so I can see what it looks like when it lightens up versus when it's more saturated. And I'm just gonna keep on going down the row. I've got cerulean blue. This might be a nice, if you're watching me, you can decide, oh, I really like that color, I need to add it, or I'm not so crazy. Cerulean blue is a lighter blue. I find it's a really nice spring blue. It's very, very playful. And you can see how light that one is, right? It may or may not, go beautifully with the purple, but mixing them together would be interesting too. I'm gonna to actually get a little bit darker here, just at the end here. Now I am gonna be using um, a lot of permanent green. So permanent green is really nice. It is very much a spring green. And so I'm moving into using more permanent green. Isn't that lovely? It is light. It has yellow in it. You can see the lightness. I'm not going to use Pull Out Hooker's Gray, which is a darker green, in this because I do want to grab some more of those spring colors. Now, I will be using Ultramarine. French Ultramarine, I think, is the one. It's a little bit... It's a little bit... has a little bit more warmth than my navy Ultramarine. So you're going to see, too, this is actually not quite, and I need to add French. It's a little bit of a different color. I think it's gonna go mix really nicely with the green and the blue and even the purple without getting too dark. There's still a warmth to it that I really like, and I'm just gonna even add a little bit more. Now I'm gonna rinse off my brush really well, go back to the other brush, we're gonna look at my yellows. So you'll notice maybe what I don't have. I don't have lemon yellow on here, which is probably I'm gonna use more in the summertime. I don't have yellow ochre either. I have the cadmium yellows, a light, and a medium. So I uh, the you let me go right over here. I'm just getting it nice and wet here, making sure I accidentally started coloring up my lemon yellow and then caught my mistake. Okay, so here is yellow cadmium light. Isn't that nice and sunny? And doesn't that just look like 
some of the sunrises we've been seeing. Now I'm gonna rinse it off again. I'm gonna go for my cadmium yellow medium. And you're gonna to see too, this is a bit more opaque. Now I would use it also in the fall. It's not as transparent, but I have been looking around and looking at some of the color on my locks and I am gonna be pulling it in a little bit more. I've got the cadmium orange and this is light. This is also a little bit more transparent, but I the, we have a lot of the California poppies and this is almost just the perfect shade. So again, it's light, it's energetic, it's beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? Now you might be thinking, where's our pink, right? I love my pink. And I have a phthalo crimson, so let me get that. It's beautiful, I love pink, I just love pink. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that so pretty? So I'll even hold that up. And you can see I've got my color card. I'm not even mixing right now. And so this is number four way just to get inspired. Isn't And I think it's really pretty. This would make a gorgeous bookmark. I could do it thinner. But that's gonna be kind of my master color card for the next few weeks. I'm gonna be focusing on using these colors. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little light floral collage with these colors. And, and it's not even about the finished project or looking really pretty. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and tape down some paper so i just i'm still going through i have quite a few paper scraps here so if you're painting along with me i'm going to go ahead and just grab any size paper tape it down and we're going to just start laying out some florals and create a lovely collage okay so i actually decided to let me move this back a bit to create a bit, let's do a floral bouquet. We're gonna create a collage, but we'll do it bouquet style. So I just switched my paper so we have it, length is a vertical looking up there. And I'm going to go ahead and just start sketching out some few flowers with the Micron pen. I am going to go ahead and use my pen this time. And I'm just going to even flip through my phone and use the phone too as an inspiration for some of the really fun flowers that I've been seeing. So you can do this too if you want to grab your phone, if you've been, if you take some pictures. I'm literally going to start these lovely, I don't know if these are early daisies, they almost look like mum, so I'm going to do a few of these flowers which I thought were really pretty and a lot of them were just looking up to the sun. So we're gonna have a little bunch of these and I'll do these and maybe some pinks and purples, right? And then I'm gonna do another, um, maybe a poppy inspired flower because I was finding some poppies over where I was the other evening. So we're gonna create some of those. And then I also had, get the little leaves in here, maybe have a, one of the little flowers sticking out just like that. And the idea is too, is just to sketch out some flowers. This is kind of loosening, loosening, loosening up our hands and our fingers, getting into more circle and winding motions, especially if you've been painting along with the mountains, right? Okay, because with the mountains, we were doing a lot of angles and then a lot of more abstracts. So we're getting it more back into close-ups now. And we'll do one more over here. Okay, and then just with this guy, if you even make it almost like a V, like almost like a tulip, which we're gonna be doing a series of tulips because I absolutely love, 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 love tulips. But with these, almost these daisy mum flowers, they really almost go, their flowers go all the way to the edge. And then the inside, we've got their face that you can see on some of them and then not so well on others. So we have got these guys here and they have sweet little, making sure you can see that, faces. And then I'm even gonna go around and I also get those poppies. So I'm just gonna go over to my picture of poppies. And let me scroll down and find that. I even have a flowering tree that was just so pretty. Okay, so we've got some poppies over here and the poppy is, you know, we're gonna make that one a little bit bigger. It was more opening up as well. Again, these are really loose sketches, super loose sketches. We're not worried too much today about being real specific because we are, the goal is, and that one it, is to create, just loosening up and getting our color palette down, our beautiful color palette for spring. And we may end up 
changing that color palette. This is what a poppy looks like. It's not open, so we'll do that as well. That's just a lot of fun to do one that is still opening up. Make a little thicker stem on these guys. Don't forget to look at those beautiful stems, right? They're just gorgeous. I'm gonna do another open one down here, which is a little bit low, but that's okay. I wanna probably, with one of these, I wanna play with combining some of the cadmium orange and then using also a little bit of the, um, the light, the cadmium yellow. And the poppy, those leaves are really long, so we're gonna do some nice long leaves here. And again, just sketching that out. And so here we've got the poppies. These are gonna be pink and blue. And also I've been seeing some other little flowers. They're just almost, they're just little like wildflowers. I don't even know what kind of wildflowers they are, but they've been purple, they've been blue. So I am gonna just create them over here They've been so, I couldn't quite get close enough to get a close up this morning. They were a little bit on the path I was. They were on the slope and I did not want to fall into the river. That would be such a bummer. And that is just the thing that, um, that potentially I would do. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and they again, lots of green and they were pretty thin, but they were just almost bunches of these light flowers. So again, I'm just sketching them out, lots of it. it. looked almost like little, little petals, just hundreds of them all together. And they were really light, and those might end up, I think I'll do those cerulean blue. Okay, so this is really, this is fun. It's a busy sketch, right? It's a really busy sketch, and we like a busy sketch. That's a lot of fun. It has lots of stuff going on, and we just almost had thin, thin extensions over here. Okay, and it does kind of look like this is gonna be our focal point. I kind of like how we have some, some circling going on, right? Okay, we might even put one more up here, maybe. But let's go ahead and just start laying down some color. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and just start playing with my greens. And I'll back that up so you can see that. And again, looking at, we are, this is the fifth way of getting inspired. This is a no pressure. Flower bouquet, just a spring flower bouquet, as if maybe we were going and we were picking flowers along the river, or maybe um, it's really too early for the garden, but maybe, maybe if your garden is, is blo blossoming and blooming. Now, fun fact, in California, if, um, if you actually pick poppies, I think it's a $50 fine since it's the national flower here in California, so if you're in California, don't pick the poppies. Don't pick the poppies. That will just land you in all sorts of uh, trouble if you get, I guess if a ranger sees you, right? So, okay, we're just gonna pick our metaphorical. That's why it's not so nice to paint them is we can kind of keep, keep them in our minds and we don't have to worry about being arrested. So I'm gonna let that dry for a quick second here and then I'm gonna go ahead and come back fixing the camera angle a bit and then once more depending on what brush size you're using that's going to make a difference I just picked up my bigger brush as you can see that's definitely creating bigger petals now we're going to lay on some yellow here in just a second so get ready for that I'm just going very loose here. Over here though, let's go ahead and lay down the yellow first and then we're gonna add some green. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm actually gonna pick up the cadmium yellow, the medium hue. And you can see it's a bit bolder. I'm gonna go up here as well and right over here where I think my leaves are extending. And then I'm gonna add the green over it. Because when I was noticing these flowers and their stalks were very, very light. So now I'm gonna take that green that I had and I'm gonna now just go right over that and start adding the green in over. Still using that permanent green. And notice too how it mixes. And notice too if you like it or maybe you don't. The cadmium is a bit more bold. And so sometimes the more bold, the transparent colors don't, I'm sorry, the opaque colors don't play quite as well with our more transparent colors. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. I'm gonna go over here, 
add in some more green. I'll add in some green too with these guys, which I forgot. And then I'm gonna grab my other green, I'm sorry, my other yellow, so the cadmium yellow light. And we're gonna notice too, as we experiment and play with this really fun palette, the difference that the, 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 um, the, the yellows make. So now I'm using this lighter yellow, and you can see it's not quite as heavy and it's not quite as dark. And it blends and plays a little bit nicer with the green. I can add it a bit over here and move that green about, and that looks really nice. Okay, but this is nice. We'll end up going back in again with another, with some more green and probably add some blue too, but I wanted to lay down the first layer. Also, the my poppy that's not open, it was a really light green, so I'm gonna even lighten that up a bit more by adding some yellow. And at the tip, I am just gonna add in a dab of orange right here. I'm going to come over on the poppy and we're just going to start laying down that cadmium orange just so. I got some green that snuck in, that bled in a bit. I'm not too worried about that. This cadmium orange will, as you can tell, see how bold that is? It will over um, overpower the more transparent colors. I'll grab some of my yellow. I'm just going to let that play. But poppies are a bold flower, so I wanted that yellow to be bold. It's not going to be like the little flowers in the corner that are more timid. Poppies have just a vibrancy. They are full of life. Okay, so I've got grab that and that yellow there. And then now we're just adding in the orange that splash of vibrancy. Very, very pretty. A little bit more in this guy. Okay, so now moving on to, we're going to add in these beautiful mums here. I'm actually going to take the purple for their faces. So their little faces, leave a little bit of white if you can. I'm going to leave that. That looks nice. Now this had a little face just barely that I could see. I'm now going to go back, grab the phthalo crimson. And I'm kind of check marking off. I'm like, okay, am I using all of our colors? So we have used the green. We've used the all the yellows. We've used the orange. We're now using the crimson. Isn't that beautiful and bold? I just love that. You see a little bit of purple got into it, but this color, this crimson and the dioxazine, I can never say that quite right, purple, they just go beautifully together. So once again, adding that in. And doesn't this look nice against the micron pen sketch? Again, just a really fun watercolor sketch. If you were using pencil, it would probably look much more abstracty. I wanted it not, I wanted just kind of that sketch, almost as if we went out plain air and took a plain air style, taking all of our paint brushes out to the trail and just sat and painted while looking at the flowers. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just dab it a little bit closer here, here, here. So fun up here as well. And the pink and the green, they'll turn in a little bit of a brown if they get too close, so be aware of that if your green is still wet. Okay, now let's go grab that cerulean blue next. We're gonna pick that up, just adding a little bit more pink over here, picking up a little bit of purple and adding that at the base. Oop, that bit, it might have been a bit much, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, maybe if you think it's a bit much, just grab your paper towel and we'll just dab here and we'll dab there and then we'll add some more pink later. Just gonna move that there, perfect. Okay, now rinse your brush really well and then making sure, I'm gonna go a little bit closer up with the camera here because we're gonna go, oh, I missed one. I'll come back with that one. With the cerulean blue a little bit lighter. So I'm really gonna take the edge of the cerulean blue, get it nice and light and I'm gonna start just laying in dots, really. We're gonna create these cute little flowers. And you can see, even though cerulean blue has a lightness, it always reminds me of a spring day, the spring sky, right? Where you have those big puffy clouds and then just the bl beautiful placid blue sky. That's what cerulean blue reminds me of. And I'm even gonna add some more just around here. Adding, leaving in quite a bit of white too. 
Now because we are looking at this as incorporating our other colors, let's go ahead and add in some of the darker blue. Just adding a few more over here. And I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that darker blue, that French ultramarine, and I'm gonna just dab it in a couple of places to show some shadowing. And you can see too how different that is, right? It actually blends very nice. They both have a similar um, energy to them. I don't really know, I'll be honest, I think this is blue is a bit of a warm, warmer blue. Like I think it has a green base instead of a red base, so it's gonna be a little bit warmer. But I'm not sure, don't quote me. I do know that those, those look very, very nice together. So you can see how our flowers are really looking lovely. Now what might be fun, because it now it looks like we almost maybe might need something over there, what I could do is I could take my pen, I'll pull this back just a little bit more now, and just do a single stalk, of the blue flowers right over there, just to, for the sake of moving that color around and making it all sing together. And we'll bring this out, some flowers over here, and maybe just a stalk, a little bit hiding behind this pink flower. And we'll have some, some a stalk coming out, just like that. Okay, so then I'll just come back over here Rinse out my brush. Once again, add those beautiful blues. We'll leave it blank in the kind of the center. I think that's the center left. At least my center left, you might be looking from your direction, the center right, this area right in there. We'll leave that just blank for a little bit of white space. We won't, we won't fill up the entire collage. I'm gonna grab some darker blue. We'll just add a little bit. This is a little bit more wet. You can see it always is going to dry lighter though, so remember that if you start to get nervous. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and let's do something else. Let's see how the green and the blues go together. Oh, I dabbed right into my poppy. Let me fix that really quick. We're just gonna dab that, perfect. That is an easy fix. We've got some more I'm gonna grab some of that blue, that darker blue, and I am just gonna add a little bit down here and then on these stems. And you can see now, if you wanna, especially wanting to add some shadowing to these leaves or some detail, adding in a darker color, like a blue, is very, very nice. You, can, you could mix blue and green right on your on your palette, or you can just add in the blue, which I like to be a little bit dramatic sometimes, and then come in with the green after. And I don't know, there may be a right way to do watercolor. Um, since I wasn't formally taught, I tend just to play and make it up as I go along. And if it doesn't work out, I know for next time, right? But this is fun. This is actually coming along really nicely. I really like it. I want to get a little bit darker here because those flowers that are lower down, there's going to be more shadows, right? Because they're covered up by the flowers above them and the stems. So grab some more green if you want to. And even doing another layer of green will darken everything up. And I haven't forgot about that lone flower. Add a little bit of darkness right here. Making sure all my flowers have stems. We need, a, we need some color on this flower, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that crimson, or that phthalo crimson, and just lay this down. Not needing to add all, leaving a little bit of white, right? And just maybe a little bit of purple. Okay, okay, this is looking really, really nice. Now what might I wanna do? Is there anything left? If I wanted to add a bit of shadowing, I could add some purple and orange together. I'm not, I am gonna mix this on my palette. A Little bit of purple and orange, and then come back in and just add, remember purple and yellow, purple and orange for your shadowing. They're complementary on the color wheel, and so they look really nice instead of trying to add another color in. So just a little bit of shadowing right in there. 
and that looks really good. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. I think this is lovely. This is our Inspired palette. We used, oh, we didn't use the brown. All right, let's pull out the brown, the Burnt Sienna. We're gonna use that brown. I am just going to, maybe along some of my, some of my flowers, I'm just, or my stems, I'm gonna add a little bit of brown down here. I'll pick up the, isn't that beautiful? I love how warm this brown is. I'll add a little bit of brown. Let's say we have a twig. We have just a twig coming up over here. We'll put that twig. I certainly have lots of fresh twigs or bright where on the trail, I'll add another twig over there and a little bit of brown in this stalk. Just some warm it up and just say that we have used our entire palette now in this lovely this lovely spring painting. So what a fun spring painting. We're back into flowers. I'm really excited. We've got lots of fun projects coming up. This is a beautiful fresh floral, very fat casual um, spring collage. I hope you enjoyed it and would love to see yours. So if you're on Instagram or Facebook, do tag me and share a picture. All right, you guys, I will see you soon.